Hey folks, I want to do a little update on the Universal Pillar Tool from George Thomas. Had a um, productive day. It's interesting, just if you followed the recent commentary from me, we're still recovering from Hurricane Sally. Matter of fact, this morning my Rotary Club got up early and uh, helped clean up the yard of one of our members who's an elderly fellow who's had some health issues. So, um, And that's going on all over town. So that was the beginning of the day. Uh, happily, it's, the weather's been great here lately, and I was able to spend most of the day out in the workshop, um, the rest of the afternoon anyway. So I'm kind of wrapping up for today. I want to show a couple of things. Got the rotary table in the mill. Hopefully that shows up pretty well. The um, I had, just like I had described, I, I had, while it was in the lathe, I turned it around, centered it, and machined it down so that basically it's just 25 thousandths of an inch wider than it needs to be. I also didn't take off quite as much material on the face as I needed to or as as the um, as the, the drawings call for. I went ahead and left it a little bit thick. I can take off about 25 thousandths. I could take off more than that, but my plan is to take off about 25 thousandths. I did bore it out and then I've just I, I carefully centered the rotary table on the mill and um, then I carefully centered the pillar tool table on the rotary table got it clamped down and I went ahead and drilled as you could well let me show you first what I, I, I decided it would be helpful if I were to write down all the different spots I don't know if that shows up or not but the I wrote down which degree angle and then um, something this might be useful to you the, the the drawings call for measurements of the the location of the slots in inboard of uh, from the edge here we go so there everything measures from the edge of the rotary table in and I you know I had it centered and I had my DRO zero zeroed on the mill so what I did was I just subtracted the dimensions as I just mentioned, that the outside dimension of the table is not finished yet, so it would be not a good idea to measure from the outside to the in to mark out where the the holes in the slots are. So, uh, long story short, I figured out where you know which which degree mark, and then measuring from the center out um, how where should the holes be drilled. So I drilled five sixteenths inch holes for each of the spots I, um, I center drilled them and then I drilled them and then I just use a, a, a two flute milling cutter to mill out the slots so that's basically finished and I'm here to tell you it sounds simple to talk about and it's uh, it happens fast when you see a CNC machine do kind of stuff like that but doing it by hand and trying to make sure I got the right degrees and everything uh, takes a long time but I'm very pleased I got got it finished now so the next thing, I'll, when I finish shooting the video, um, I'm going to take this out and I will clean the table up, uh, deburr any of the slots that need to be deburred, and uh, I will use some uh, nail polish remover to clean up the center bore of the rotary table, and I'll let that dry, and I've got some of this Loctite primer I'm gonna use to prime the location for the green Loctite. And this stuff, once the uh, the little table stem is Loctited to the table, it's not coming off. So uh, not without using like a, a blowtorch to heat it up and then a press to press it out. It is a light press fit. I very carefully machined this on the lathe. I used a boring tool and I took um, several, I'd, I'd take a pass, a cutting pass, then I'd take a spring pass and measure it and um, Hopefully you know what a spring pass is. If you don't, uh, take a look. You know that, or or ask me in the comments below, and I'll describe it. But um, I've very very methodically machined out the center bore to fit the little stem that I've showed in previous videos. So the plan is that I will Loctite that all together tonight. I'll I'll press it in my Benford 6100 press over there, and uh, press it together. Let it dry overnight. And then tomorrow, I can put the stem in the 5C collet chuck, and when it's all the Loctite is all secure, I'll be able to turn, take off the 25 thousandths on the outside diameter here, 
and which is only a 12,000 steep cut and I could do that in, a, in one or two passes and then perhaps take another skim cut off the top just to that will ensure everything is completely concentric with the stem I, I don't anticipate any lack of concentricity but um, you know be good practice to be able to do that um, part of the reason I don't anticipate any lack of concentricity I want to show this I have this um, coaxial tool I use this for both centering the the rotary table and the uh, the table for the pillar tool on top I'm going to be real careful with that it's a delicate instrument and put that back um, it, something else might be handy this is a actually a morse taper gosh i'm jostling the camera around aren't i the, a little morse taper adapter for the rotary table and what i did was when i got this i measured i realized this was a consistent diameter i can't remember what it is now but i made a cap that fits on there very tightly and it has a a little center dot there so I, when I first put the rotary table on, I'll go ahead and clamp it down in its position, and then I'll put this in, and I'll use a feeler gauge, not a feeler gauge, but one of the, an indicator like this with a point, and I'll use the pointed indicator, and I'll go right to the center there. And that gets me within about six thousandths of an inch of being perfectly centered. It's pretty amazing. Um, and then, so then I'll lock things down and I'll mark zero, zero on my DRO. And then I can use the coax indicator in the center part. I'll take this out and use it in the center part where this thing goes. So I hope that makes sense. But it, it you know, it is a long and cons time consuming chore to, to center a rotary table. But so I'm, I'm very pleased with that technique. Very happy about it. And uh, there we go, there's another close-up, little different view of the rotary table. Um, can't think of anything else I, can, I need to do to it before I take it out and stick it together with a Loctite. So that'll get done tonight, and then like I said, tomorrow I can finish the actual outside of the rotary, of the, uh, the pillar tool table, and that'll be done. And I'm thinking the next thing I'll probably do is the base. Um, because that's then the, the the arms are fairly consistent with each other, but the base is a different, a unique uh, specimen, and um, I may do that. A word about the castings from Martin Cat Martin Models and Patterns, whatever their name is. Beautiful cast iron. It you know does make a bit of a mess when you machine the cast iron, but it machined beautifully. And um, I just vacuumed it up or swept it up or used a magnet to pick it up. No hard spots, no voids in the castings, nothing so far. It's just, it's been a, a virtual dream. So really happy about that. Thank you to the folks at Martin Models, Martin Castings for making those. So thanks for watching everybody. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for future updates and I will keep you posted. Thanks again.